Good morning, my brothers and sisters. How are you? So I'm, I'm going to do what I do in my business that I've done for the last 52 years. I'm going to start off with giving you the bad news. It's also something you have the power to change for the better. Many, many Americans who don't work on Wall Street do not understand a very simple concept that's important to secure retirements, the time value of money. They don't understand that pensions are not a gratuity, as Governor Scott Walker has effectively described them, and which would make pensions for public workers criminal because we're not in the business of handing out taxpayer dollars as gratuities to individuals. They are your wages that people prudently set aside today so that when they have gray hair like mine, they will prosper. The problem is that because people don't understand the time value of money, politicians come along and say, I'm going to give you a tax cut. And they don't tell you, or people don't listen, when they're told. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to stop funding pensions, which is what happened in New Jersey when Governor Florio was voted out. And when Chris Christie was elected, he promised, I'm going to fill in the huge hole we have created in our pension plan by not funding it. And then he discovered that well, actually, by the time the chickens come home to roost, he'd be out of office, so let's not do it. The same thing is happening in corporate America. The rules that allow companies to not properly fund pensions. Uh, I was the chairman of the newspaper guild at the Philadelphia Inquirer and Philadelphia Daily News 25 years ago. And we fought to protect our pension. And in our pension, we got 6% of payroll plus $15 per head. And per head was whether you're a full-time or part-time employee every week. $780 a year per worker. And it was paid with your pay every week into the fund. Company wanted to lower payments, defer payments, and we said no and made it clear we'd walk. It is absolutely vital that you get other people to understand that pensions are the most efficient vehicle short of a national expansion of Social Security, which would be a good thing. The most efficient vehicle to provide for people's old age. And there is, for a society, no escaping the costs of old age. And unless, of course, you know, you want to just say, gee, you're 70, you're superannuated, we're going to kill you. The proper way to deal with this is to fund it in advance. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I suspect many of you do, all the research shows that professionally managed defined benefit plans lose less in down markets and make more in up markets compared to these self-saving plans, 401k type plans, which were intended originally in the law to provide a little tax break to the finance industry, to highly paid bankers and other people who are in the money business. But the way it was written, it could apply to anyone. And it has become a replacement for, rather than a supplement to, pension plans. And most Americans, of course, don't know that because this change took place almost 40 years ago. Everybody who is under the age of 60 is too young to have known this, unless they took a college course or attended a lecture or happened to read a book that explained this to them. They think this is the way it's supposed to be. We can change that. But we have to get people to understand what pensions are and why they are so crucial, just as Social Security is. It is a benefit that in the case of the pension you earned, 
and you prudently set aside part of your wages today that you could have taken as cash, gone and spent on pizzas or a better car, and in the case of Social Security, that you paid for with your taxes. And it is clear from the lecturing I do all over the country, from the radio shows that I do several times a week when people call in, that Americans overall, they have no understanding of this. They do not understand financing for old age. In fact, if you turn on your television during the day, you will see ads left and right that basically say, uh, short of money, uh, let's have a reverse mortgage. Hi, I'm Tom Selleck. <laughs> <clears throat> Yet another way Wall Street has figured out how to get your assets into their pockets. Fundamentally, we need to get people to understand that because once we increase the number of people who understand that it is prudent, it is conservative, it is smart to set aside part of your wages for the future in a pool, in a defined benefit insurance plan, we can then begin to work on the other problems that we face. And there's right now going on in the financial press, has been going on for a couple of years, discussions about how it's imprudent to have a defined benefit pension plan. Nobody in their right mind would go and do this because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And it's, it's just too risky. Well, funny thing, um, if you pick up the phone when you leave here and you call Prudential or Aetna or MetLife or any other insurance company and say, I have this pool of money of my own and I'm this age, and I'd like to get an annuity at some age, maybe today, how much will I get back? They will happily sell you a single person defined benefit pension plan. They'll also charge you enormously high prices. Uh, ExxonMobil, a company that is in a terrible industry, but is in fact an extraordinarily well-managed company. It is a model of how to manage a company. It runs its pension plan at a cost of 12 basis points. That is, for every $100, they spend 12 cents investing the money and managing the money and paying payments to retirees. 12 cents. At one point <clears throat> in a previous market when interest rates were higher, they were down to 5 cents out of every $100. Now, the other side of this with pension plans is looting of them. It is going on all over America. Companies are buying private annuities from Wall Street. And when they do that and they say, well, we're, we're going to take the pension plan here and we're going to provide you with a lifetime annuity, here's what they're really doing. They're taking away your guarantee from Congress through the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which currently covers almost $60,000 a year of benefits if you retired at age 65 and if you <coughs> are in a single employer plan. And about $14,000 if you're in a multi-employer plan. They're taking that away from you. You now have no guarantee at all. So if they go to some Wall Street outfit that invests it in risky investments to get a better price and they fail, your income stream will disappear and you no longer have any rights. And you didn't choose to do this. Now, they'll notify you. They're required to notify you. They don't always. I was in a plan that was converted to, from single employer to multi-employer and didn't get notice. But they're going to send you what is a whole bunch of legalese, and unless you've spent years studying finance and the law, many of the words will be meaningless to you. They do that on purpose. The high priests of finance don't want you to understand, because they want your money. We need to educate the public about the efficiency and effectiveness of defined benefit plans, and then we need to get a Congress that will protect the money that you own that your brothers and sisters own, that you put into the insurance plan called a defined benefit pension. One of the ways to protect this is to adopt something from the 401k system. With the exception of, of little employers, and I've exposed some of them, 
who didn't turn the money over to the 401k plan. One, one guy went so far as he faked up documents uh, telling the workers that he'd invested their money when in fact he was stealing it. And Congress, is a, or the Labor Department as a result of my work, tightened up the rules to make it harder to do that. You can't steal as much money if you're a crook that way anymore. <laughs> Not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. <clears throat> We need to get people to understand that it's inefficient for you to save through a defined contribution plan. But the great thing about a defined contribution plan, a 401k plan, is the money is not on the books of the company. They can't steal it because it's in a separate trust. Typically that trust will be set up at Vanguard or Fidelity or T. Rowe Price or one of the various investment houses but it is off the books of the company. It only shows up on the books of the company as payments to the plan. By the way, how interesting that the companies and government always want to call these contributions. <laughs> That's part of tricking people into thinking pensions are gratuities, that they're a gift rather than money you earned and prudently set aside. Well, defined benefit pension plans, we can get the law changed to do the same thing. If Company A has a defined benefit pension plan. The trust should be separate from the company. It shouldn't be an asset of the company. And the only thing the company should be required to disclose to shareholders is if there is a shortfall in the funding, a liability that they owe to the pension plan. And then we just need a rule that you can't have that liability. You've got to pay that money. And if shareholders are going to lose their dividend, tough luck. These are wages. Imagine what would happen if people in America routinely went to work. And when they get their paycheck, instead of covering five days, it's only three. And everybody goes and says, hey, what's going on here? And the boss says, well, I couldn't afford it this week. Or, well, I didn't think you needed that much. Or, well, I'm going to make it up for you in the future. We've decided to go to five-year accounting. So if this isn't there at the end of five years, we'll make it up by and by. People would never stand for it. So another reform. Your paycheck stub should include a line that says, this much money that you earned was put into the pension plan this pay period. With Here is how much this year. Now, one other way to think about the need for this reform is this. The IRS publishes tables on how much money you have to withdraw from your pension plan, your personal defined benefit plan, a uh, uh, defined contribution plan, an IRA, a 401k, a 407, a 403b, similar plans. And it has tables. You know those tables go to 116? So presumably in the 117th year, 100 would be your 118th year, you have to withdraw whatever's left in your, your tax-deferred account. <laughs> but the reality is there are people in this room who will die, unfortunately, very soon. And there are people in this room who are probably going to live decades from now. If you have to rely on a 401k plan, your own individual plan, not only do you have to manage the money and specialize in it, just like I know that all of you do your own dental work and surgery <laughs> because that's the most efficient way to do this. But you have to plan, if you retire at 65, to live to be 100, which means you have to save more than you need to. On the other hand, if you have a defined benefit pension plan with 1,000 workers, the law of large numbers, and good work by actuaries, means that they can determine in that pool of people life expectancy. And let's assume it's 84 years. Well, then you fund the plan for 85 years. And you put in less money, which means you have more to consume today, which is better for the economy today. And yet you're guaranteed that if you live to be 100, you'll keep being paid. And most plans have a rule that if you retire and drop dead the next day, your family still gets either half a benefit or 10 years of benefits or 20 years of benefits, so you're not wiped out. We need, however, to get better laws to protect pension plans and make them expand. A Congress that is responsive to us, folks who work for a living. <clears throat>
You know, we, we have endured now for almost 40 years a con Congress of, by, and for the rich. We have endured a Congress that has done everything within its power to make it difficult to organize a union. We have imposed unbelievable reporting requirements. When I go and speak to union groups, there are these incredible detailed rules that I have to follow that are not true when I go speak to a university or a charity or a civic group. All of those are designed to muck up the union movement. And that's a, another essential element that we need to change in our society. When the conservatives, when Paul von Hindenburg and the conservatives in Germany in the late 1920s thought they could take this very, very popular figure who many saw as a demigod, as opposed to a demigod named Adolf Hitler, and they would put him in office and then they would control him. Don't imagine that resonates with anything currently going on in America. <laughs> that one of the, the things they realized they had to do to put in place the German conservative plan, not the Nazi plan, the conservative government plan, was they had to effectively eliminate unions, to make them unpowerful, because unions are the organizations that speak up for working people. <coughs> we have to get unions back. And I would point to Japan as a model. Almost everybody in Japan who's not in top management works, belongs to a union. In Germany, by the way, Many, many managers belong to unions. But do you know why everybody belongs to a union in Japan? Because that famous lefty, General Douglas MacArthur, as the pro-council in Japan after World War II, had his generals and colonels write a constitution for Japan that required unions. And why did they do this? And why did uh, he have the support of Harry Truman and Eisenhower and others, because unions were seen as a way of controlling the most militaristic instincts of the Japanese ruling class, of encouraging better incomes and therefore social stability, and promoting democracy. Now, we could do the same thing here. Instead of having numerous unions, Germany has eight or nine unions, I learned last night from President Roach, or or were you? Or you? One of you. Um, I knew they had a few. I just didn't know it was that few. Maybe we need to have a different structure about unions. Maybe we need to organize it in a different way. But if we're going to intelligently provide for the old age of today's young, you and I are going to have to do the work of changing the political culture in which we operate. So the first most important thing I want you to talk about with people and get across to them is that a pension is wages you could have taken in cash, but prudently and conservatively set aside for your old age. It's your money. that if your employer doesn't every pay period or every month set aside the money that you earn and designate it to go into a pension plan, your employer is stealing from you. If it was cash wages, the State Labor Department or the Federal Department of Labor, even with its very reduced number of inspectors, would be after this employer and saying, you've got to pay these people this money you owe them. And the way to get that is to require that paycheck stubs disclose how much money went into the pension plan on your behalf. The next thing we need to do is get rid of a rule that Democrats are responsible for and that I wrote about 23 years ago. To squeeze a little more money out of the tax system, the Democrats put a cap on how much compensation is covered in a pension plan. Currently, it's about $250,000 in round numbers. Well, less than 1% of American workers make more than $250,000 a year. So that sounds great, except for one thing. The people who decide on how the company's going to compensate its workers, the CEO, 
the chief financial officer, the chief human relations officer, the general counsel's office. They're all making way above that. We disconnected the interest of the janitor from the CEO through this limit on pensions. If you get a salary of $50 million a year, and by the way, there are over 100 Americans whose salary is over $50 million a year. If you get a salary of over $50 million a year, I'm perfectly willing to include you in the pension plan and you get a benefit based on 50 million, but I think you shouldn't get anything, stock options, stock rights, bonuses, unless the janitor gets the exact same benefit. <laughs> Tax benefits are inextricably connected to pension plans. They are a deferral of the tax into the future. And those rules should be the same for everybody. As George W. Bush said, what's fair on the executive floor should be fair on the shop floor. And I want to encourage you in every way possible to persuade young people that defined benefit pension plans are good things. We have, an, we have young people in this country, and I, I have eight grown children and three already of my grandchildren are grown up, and I'm not 70 yet, who believe that we'll never get Social Security, it's all just a scam by the boomers to take their money that pension plans are just a complete disaster. They bought the, uh, uh, the um, Kool-Aid from Wall Street, that nobody can manage money for decades into the future, which is, of course, why we always see wealthy families collapse and fall apart to be replaced by other wealthy families. <laughs> and we need to begin persuading them that you need to think about the future. When I got hired as a staff writer at the San Jose Mercury when I was only 19 years old and I went in to fill out my paperwork to get paid and everything, at the end of it, the woman in HR says, is there anything else you want to know about? And I said, tell me about the pension plan. I suspect she dined out of that for the rest of her life. A <laughs> teenager asking her about the pension. By the way, I didn't get one because at the time you had to be 21 to be eligible to be in the pension plan. And then I didn't stay long enough. But we need to also, you need to tell your grandchildren, your friends' grandchildren, college students you meet, young people who come to work in the companies that you worked at, that prudently setting aside money today that you could have taken as cash wages into a professionally managed pool will make you well off in your old age and that we will work to get rules to protect that money from thieves on Wall Street. So, thank you.